NBA Finals underway last night, game one. Somebody that knows a little bit about the NBA, a little bit more than we do, Jamal Crawford. He joins us now at Patch and Luke and Zanoso. Jamal, how you doing? I'm great. How you guys doing? We're, we're wonderful. Uh, before we get into why you're coming to our uh, neck of the woods, let's uh, get into the NBA Finals last night. Did you, did you tune in? I did check it out. and It was a great game. You know, both teams had great runs. And then OKC was able to close it out. Durant was amazing in the fourth quarter. Westbrook made some timely plays. And I think Collison did all the little things that you need to be successful. We were discussing earlier if NBA players that don't make the NBA Finals watch the NBA Finals because it's that's the games they want to be playing in. And so if I don't make it, I don't care. Do you always watch the Finals? Yeah, I always watch those games. It's so competitive, and this is a fun time of year. You know, and at the end of the day, there's only two teams that can actually get there and represent their cities and their fan base, and both those teams are doing a heck of a job, and I think we'll have a long series. Well, what do you think happens tomorrow night now? I mean, it, it, we saw the Heat make a run. We saw the Thunder make a run. The Thunder's run was better. What do you think we're going to see tomorrow night? Tomorrow, I think you'll see some adjustments. Uh, I think... Miami will stop selling so much for the jump shot and get some easy baskets, get out and transition and use their athleticism. You know, I think with LeBron and Wade, they're two of the best attackers that we have in the league on the wing. And with those guys attacking, getting easy baskets, they break down your defense. You know, that's what they did pretty much all year. And I think they'll get back to it uh, tomorrow. Jamal, you're a guy that's put up 50 points in a game in the NBA. When you're watching Kevin Durant score, does he even kind of make you shake your head sometimes? Oh, definitely. Because the thing about it is Kevin's 6'11". You know, and he's moving like that. He's moving like a guy that's 6'2", 6'3". He shoots like a guy that's 6'2", 6'3". You know, and he's very fluid. Nobody can actually block his shot because he's so high up there. And then he has great quickness. He has uh, he has a knack for scoring. You know, guys like that, they can wield the ball in the hoop. And even if they miss three or four in a row, it doesn't shake his confidence. He knows he can hit four or five, six in a row. And his team needs that for him to be successful. We were kind of thinking that uh, it would be he and LeBron guarding each other, and it, it didn't always work out that way. Uh, I don't know if you were in charge, how would you do it? Would you would you put Wade? Uh, or, I mean, I'm sorry. Would you put LeBron on somebody else so he didn't have to work so hard on the defensive end? Yeah, I think with uh, players like that and Durant and those guys, they're such great players that they've seen so many different looks. I think through the course of a series, you have to continue to make adjustments, see what works, see what doesn't. A guy like LeBron, you ask him to do everything else on the floor, you know, and especially when he was in Cleveland. His weak side defense is amazing, you know. So maybe you put somebody else on Durant to force him into where LeBron is, so he can help, and then have him pass to a Cephalosha or somebody like that. Somebody that's very capable, but still, you'd rather have Cephalosha taking those shots than Durant taking them. Jamal, who's the better player of those two? Do you think Durant or LeBron? <laughs> I mean, oh, I, I know you knew this was coming. <laughs> There's a, but, that's but not you, too loaded a question. From somebody that plays yeah. in the league and understands everything that goes into it, and you've played with and against these guys, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that question? Honestly, I think that they both can get you 30 a game. They both can get you eight boards, but then LeBron can get you seven or eight assists as well. So I have to give the nudge to LeBron. Then Durant has that clutch gene that in the fourth quarter he wants it, you know, and not to say LeBron doesn't, but – Durant really seems to shine in those, uh, those situations. So right now, today, maybe I would say LeBron, you know, because the way he affects the game on both ends. But Durant is right there. Like, it's it's very close. I think this was a conversation we had a couple years back with Kobe and LeBron. You know, when you can sure. see LeBron kind of making his stride and making his way, and Durant is right there. And I, like I said yesterday on Twitter, I think the NBA is in, in great hands with those two at the helm, you know, as, as, as they go to the two. Which of the two would you least want to defend? Just you personally? Oh, LeBron, for sure. Now that he has a post game, I mean, he's, what, 250, 260 pounds. <laughs> he's 6'9". He runs as fast as, uh, you know, uh, Iverson. He's the strongest Carl Malone. It's unbelievable the package he has. Yeah, it, it, that's probably not fun guarding either one, I would no, imagine. No, I mean, it's it's not. The 6'11", and he just rises up over the top, even though you're it's right in not. his face, you know. I mean, and Durant can frustrate you. Like you said, He's right. you're right there with him at all times. The guy makes a shot from 25, 30 feet like it's a free throw, and that's just that can break somebody's spirit as well. So they're both just unbelievable to guard. And they both have great running mates in, in Wade and uh, Westbrook, and it seemed like last night Westbrook got the best of that deal. Yeah, he did. Now, I think... With, I've talked to Durant numerous times, and he has a great deal of respect for Westbrook's game. And they've really learned how to complement each other. They're growing together as one. 
the difference with LeBron and Wade is the fact that they were both alpha male. You know, last year coming to the season, I mean, the season before LeBron went there, you would say Wade and LeBron were both top five players. Well, now they both kind of play similar. They play the same style of game, and only one of them. You know, if, if LeBron's going to be the best player he can be, Wade has to kind of take a back seat and vice versa. So I think they're still figuring things out. Maybe they went on talent. Maybe they make some adjustments, and maybe they don't. You know, we were talking earlier about this, and, and uh, Miami jumped out to a nice double-digit lead early in the game. But uh, as as uh, Keith said here, they they probably didn't take an advantage uh, advantage of the situation because Battier was shooting so well, things were clicking for him that they didn't really pour on the lead. Do you, and being a player and, and part of, part of an NBA team, I, I mean, a fourteen point lead is one thing, but a you know a twenty two point lead maybe is a whole different thing. Is it psychologically and physically tougher to come back from a twenty two point deficit than let's say a sixteen point deficit? Oh, no question about it. And the length of the NBA game is so long that the that you, there's always a chance. And and now OKC is becoming battle tested. If you look at it. Even when they beat the Lakers, there may have been two or three games that could have went the Lakers' way. But for whatever reason, call it luck, call it being blessed, but OKC kind of created that momentum and created that movement and, and handled the Lakers' best shot and was able to come, come out on top. Same thing, uh, game, I think, six or seven with San Antonio. Whatever game that was, they were six, they were down 18 at halftime. You know, and then they come back and win the game. So they're battle tested now. And if you can get a, a game from 14 to 22, now when it's 22 and you, it's not going perfect, you have to take Durant those guys out because you want to save them for the next game. That changes everything, you know. So when you have a team down like that, you have to stay on. Jamal, let's talk about the A-plus classic coming to Spokane Hoop Fest weekend, uh, your game. You're bringing your buddies over, uh, all the Seattle basketball players, which is a ton of guys, as we yeah. talked about <laughs> the other day, plus some local guys from around this area. Can you just kind of remind uh, the listeners uh, who they can expect to maybe see uh, oh, yeah. In your game? They can expect to see uh, Spencer Hawes, Nate Robinson, Brandon Roy, Isaiah Thomas, uh, Clay Thompson, John Wall, uh, Rony Torioff will be a part. You can see there's so many guys. I can't think of everyone. I'm sorry. Aaron Brooks, Rodney Stuckey, so many different guys. From I'll be there, and I'm still forgetting a ton of people. I'm sorry to the guys I'm forgetting, but it's going to be a great, great event. And Spokane deserves it. You know, Hoop Fest is definitely the best in the country, and they have so many people there. And, They'll get a chance to come out, and uh, you know we'll we'll come out there and support them a little bit when we can, and get out there and watch them play at the three on three tournament. And then at nighttime, hopefully, they come support us and support these kids out here with this A plus program, and and have a good time. Bring your family, bring your friends. It'll be a fan friendly event. You know, you can interact with the players, talk to some pros and stuff that maybe haven't been to Spokane, and show them a good time. You know, and it's all about the kids, helping the kids, and bringing basketball, some professional basketball still can, and I think it'll be a, a knockout event. You going to put all your Rainier Beach guys on one team? No, no, no. We play against <laughs> each other enough. <laughs> we play against each other enough, so we got to split it up a little bit, that's for sure. Hey, Jamal, have you been warned about what you're getting into on this weekend as far as how crazy the downtown area is going to be here? Yes, yes. I've heard they've shut blocks off and everything, but the thing about it is sometimes experience is the best teacher, so you have to go through it yourself. And I've been hearing how great it was. Brandon Roy came up to the Hoop Fest, I think his rookie year, going to his rookie year, did an autograph sign up there, and he told me it was just unbelievable. So he's excited to be coming back down there. And everybody there, I'm trying to tell all the players who are not familiar with the Spokane area how much fun they're going to have, you know, and guys are really, really looking forward to it and have it marked in their calendar. So we're going to have a good time in Spokane, and hopefully Spokane enjoys us out there. Now, I know that there's going to be a lot of offense in this game. We discussed that before. Not a lot of defense yeah. till usually the last couple of minutes. Uh it, do you remind the guys, look, guys, this is the Jamal Crawford basketball classic. <laughs> I need to lead the t- the game in scoring tonight. I mean, do you kind of remind guys, give me the ball? Yeah, I think that moment will come later on in the game. In the fourth <laughs> quarter. <laughs> For sure. I think early everybody can get out there and show the fans a good time, you know, come out there, shoot some threes, get some dunks. But the fourth quarter when it's winning time and it's crunch time, I think that's when all the competitive juices come out and, and guys really get going. So I'll be – I'm looking forward to that part of the game for sure. All those guys you named off outside of maybe, you know, Brandon Roy and Rony Turioff, I mean, you're the old guy compared to a lot of these guys. Is it, is it kind of fun to play with all the kids? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely a veteran. A lot of these guys came up underneath me, you know, and I've had a chance to interact with a lot of these guys over the years. You know, me starting out when I was 19 years old in the NBA has given me a, a different type of perspective and insight. And, 
it's fun to be able to, to get out there and still compete with them at a high level and also be able to show them the ropes a little bit. So it'll be a good time for all of us. Well, we look forward to seeing you, Jamal. We look, Hopefully you're, you're going to enjoy your time in Spokane because it's sure going to be a basketball yeah. Frenzy, like like oh, yeah. like I can't even describe, and I'm hoping it, you get a chance to to walk around some of the streets during the day. I definitely will. And this game is for those diehard basketball fans. We're we're sad when we have the Spokane Arena. It's, it's a great facility, but it holds twelve thousand people, and we know that Spokane out there can it'll be a couple hundred thousand people. Hopefully, you know everybody can get in as soon as they can, and, and they'll see a, a three point contest. I'm sure some guys will maybe have a dunk contest and really interact with the fans because we know it's diehard basketball fans out there. We tell everybody that's their first time at Hoop Fest as a piece of advice, take an hour and just walk around the streets because you'll you'll be it, it's too hard first of all to maneuver through the streets quickly, but because there's so many people, but it's too hard to try to take everything in in 5 minutes. So we always tell everybody take some time, walk around and really take it in. Oh yeah, we definitely will. We're coming there for the weekend, so hopefully we can be excited about us. We are there. All right, Jamal, we look forward to seeing you and we look forward to the show that you and your boys are going to put on here. At the Spokane Arena Hoop Fest weekend, we'll see you for the uh, Jamal Crawford A-plus Classic. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me again.